Seekers, I'm Nick. At Computex this year, one X570 motherboard piqued my interest more than anything else I saw at the entire show. When Azrock showed me this product the day before Computex, I gave our rep a high five and I said to her, thank you so much for breaking every single rule, not caring about what any other vendor is doing, and finally making something really cool that I can actually get properly excited about. In this video, we're checking out a motherboard that harks back to the days when motherboard vendors didn't care about anything. It was basically them experimenting and they were combining things on boards that just shouldn't exist. We're checking out the ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming ITX TB3 that supports Ryzen 2000 and 3000 CPUs with Thunderbolt 3 and Intel 11 5X cooler mounting. What a time to be alive. Let's check it out. Before we start this video, I want to make it super clear that our motherboard videos aren't reviews, they're just overviews so you can get an idea of the feature set with these boards and what physically comes in the box when you buy a brand new motherboard. We're not doing VRM analysis or board teardowns or anything like that. There's plenty of other channels that cover all of this stuff and we're just not one of them. So don't ask why we do it because yeah, that's just not what we do here. All right, let's check out the X570 Phantom Gaming ITX TB3. I've been waiting for this one for a while. Let's check it out. The Phantom Gaming ITX TB3. Wow, it's finally here. <laughs> all right, let's uh, get it out of the box so we can take a closer look at all of the things that it comes with. Now, this is an ITX board, so they generally don't come with that much because of the size of them. But yeah, let's just uh, take a look anyway. Okay, the first thing we've got is a bunch of SATA cables. Now, there's two. This is for connecting up your spinning rust or your 2.5 inch SSDs. There's a screw for the single M.2 slot on this board. I wish this board had two, but as you're about to find out, there's a very good reason for it. There's also the antenna for the Wi-Fi 6 and the Bluetooth 5.0. There's the uh, circular plastic disc that no one has a drive for anymore. The more I talk about this, the more the vendors are going to listen. Give us USB sticks with the drivers on it. It's going to make life easier. Uh, there is the standard ASRock postcard. I'm not going to be sending this to anyone. I want to keep this postcard. I want to keep everything with this motherboard because I'm using this board in one of my personal systems. This is the quick installation guide. It's actually really, it's the manual and it's in multiple languages. And it basically just shows you where everything is on the motherboard and how to set everything up. It's, uh, it's good to keep this on hand if you run into any problems. There's also the software setup guide. This is basically to show you how to configure the BIOS for overclocking and uh, just doing a few little tweaks here and there. This is pretty standard stuff, but uh, let's stop talking about everything in the box and let's take that little beast out of the static bag and take a closer look at the ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming ITX TB3. Let's do it. Along the bottom of the board, we've got the front panel audio. There's also a 16 times PCIe Gen 4 slot. Yes, this is X570, so it supports PCIe Gen 4. Above the right hand side of the PCIe slot, we'll find a USB 2.0 header for things like AIOs and the front panel connectors for your buttons and your lights and all that jazz. There's four SATA ports for your spinning rust or 2.5 inch SSDs. There's a USB 3.0 header. There's a 24 pin power connector, which is pretty standard on every motherboard these days. And a three pin five volt addressable RGB header for polychrome RGB. On the top of the board, there's a CPU fan header and an AIO pump header. There's a 12 volt analog RGB header. And on the right hand side of the top of the board, well, actually the left, if you're looking at it that way, is an eight pin EPS power connector for the CPU. Like basically every X570 board on the market, the chipset is actively cooled. And this is how ASRock's doing it. Except if you turn around and look at the other side of the heatsink, you'll notice there's a heat pipe that connects to the IO. Shield. Now that IO shield is kind of special. You'll find that the whole IO shield is actually a giant heatsink, which also cools the very impressive 10 phase VRM on this board. You heard right, it's got 10 phases on an ITX board. Now, how are they doing this? Well, 
there's a little bit of magic that they're doing here. You'll notice that the socket is a standard AM4 socket, but the cooler mounting is actually for Intel's 11.5X sockets. What they've decided to do is remove the AMD cooling solution because it takes up too much room and the keep out zones are quite large and use the cooler mounting solution for Intel sockets because the keep out zones are a lot smaller so they can cram a lot more on the board so there can be a lot more power delivery and a lot more features. And if we flip the board over, you'll actually see the back side of the socket. There is a Intel-like backplate. It's actually not exactly the same as an Intel backplate. That is to support the backside of the socket so the board doesn't collapse on itself when you put a cooler on. And while we're on the back of the board, we'll talk about that M.2 slot. It's got a single M.2 slot and it does support PCIe Gen 4. So you can get that really fast storage, but just be aware, PCIe Gen 4 drives run really hot, so you'll need one with a heat sink. There's two DDR4 RAM slots that run in dual channel that support overclocked memory up to 4533 megahertz. Not too bad for an ITX board. The rear I.O. has got a PS2 port, a USB port, the antenna connectors for the Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0, a display port connector and an HDMI connector, and a clear CMOS button, and a Thunderbolt 3 port which is USB-C form factor, but it is Thunderbolt 3. There's also some USB 3.2 ports, type A. There's also gigabit ethernet and 7.1 digital audio. And as you'll notice with most boards that we saw this year at Computex and most X570 boards, an integrated IO shield. To admit this board's pretty cool feature wise it's a little cut down with some things but it has the right stuff where it counts and i guess we'll just have to find out how this board truly performs when we do a build that's coming really soon and we're going to put it through its paces so if you're interested in grabbing the asrock x570 phantom gaming itx tb3 there's no official pricing available at the time of filming and yeah there's just no not much information out out there about this board and I couldn't really find out anything about it so yeah um, we'll just keep you guys updated and we'll keep the description updated when we find out more info if you like this video please like and subscribe if you like this video you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it once again thank you so very much for watching I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers you peak we seek and this board is truly interesting to me I'm putting it in my own personal gaming PC. That's where it's gonna live. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.